I'm Raj Chengappa and I'm with Dr. Farooq Abdullah in Srinagar at his house here. Soon after the movie's release of uh, Kashmir Files that has made waves across the country and also caused controversies. Dr. Farooq Abdullah, let me start with asking you, what is your impression of this movie and what has it done? Well, I say that this movie is a propaganda movie. Uh, it has really raked up a tragedy of 1990. A tragedy which has affected every soul in this state, not only the Hindu brethren who had to leave this state, but also the Muslim majority who were greatly affected at that time. It was a, it was a sad situation, very sad, uh, because there was an element of parties that were interested in cleansing, ethnic cleansing, and some of the people played part in that ethnic cleansing. Now, uh, the movie itself seems to, partly seems to blame you as chief minister for not doing things and in fact being lax and allowing the situation to get out of hand. I don't think it's true. Because if the people want to know the truth, which is very bitter, the people who can tell them, rather than Farooq Abdullah explaining to them, I would like to tell them to talk to or read Dullat's book, who was then the uh, IB chief here in the state. Or talk to my chief secretary, Musa Raza, who is still alive, thank God, and living in Chennai. Talk to the governor of Kerala, uh, who was also at that time a minister in the central government, Arif Muhammad Khan. He will also like to, he should also apprise you of the things at that time. Because when the situation was such, and they wanted to release five of those people who we had caught, I refused to release them. This is when you're talking about uh, Rubaya Saeed's uh, kidnapping yes, yes, and the fact exactly. that it was held and you were chief minister yes, that exactly time. exactly, I was chief minister. And uh, the gov government of India was led by VP Singh and his associates were also from BJP. They were supporting his government. So the point here was that I said to them, don't do it because it will be a terrible tragedy for the nation. A nation will pay a heavy price in future. They didn't listen. So much so, uh, I, I was told that if you don't do it, we will dismiss you. I said, give it to me in writing that your cabinet has asked for this thing. Because what will happen now, it will be the last nail in the coffin of India in this state. You are responsible for it now. Then, second incident that took place was when the plane was hijacked. And they wanted to take those three people from here. I begged them, that don't do it. This will be a great tragedy. You're talking of the Kandahar hijack or the earlier? Kandahar, one? Kandahar. No. That was the hijacked plane that they did. And I said, we should not give in to terrorists. They gave in. And that is how all this thing, you know, blew up. Because they thought, well, if Russians can be thrown out of um, Afghanistan, we will be throwing India out of in, uh, Kashmir. And, and we paid a bitter price for it. And let us not be, now it looks wrong, because when the person is dead, we try to respect his thing. But we cannot forget, at that time's governor, he put these pundits into the buses and sent them and said, in two months I'll bring you back, because I have to use force on these people, and in that the retaliation might take place on you, therefore let me work on this and I'll bring you back in two months. 32 years, where are they? You were saying that Governor Jagmohan, who was there at that time, is the one that was responsible for the pundits fleeing. It was not the situation in the valley, not you who was ruling before I that. I was not ruling then, because I had given, the minute Jagmohan came in, I gave up. I said, you don't trust us, now you trust him. Hmm. Go ahead and try to save situation. Was he able to save situation? The very first day in downtown, 50 people lost life. He was the man in charge. Hmm. Then in Bijbara, people coming out of the mosque were shot off. How many things shall I narrate to you what happened? 
And you were saying that the pundits didn't flee. It was Jagmohan who asked them to leave so that he could take tough action from what you said earlier. See, let me tell you. Hmm. There'll be people who will tell you various stories. Truth will come out when you put a, a, a honest, honorable judge, retired judge or a committee of these people to find out the truth. You will come to know who's responsible. If Farooq Abdullah is responsible, Farooq Abdullah is ready to be hanged anywhere in the nation. I'm ready to stand that trial. But don't blame people who are not res responsible. You are saying a truth commission should be able... What is yes. the kind of commission that you'd want? Would it investigate only the pundits or you're looking for an overall investigation of what no, has happened? It is not only the pundits. What about the Sikhs in Chhati Singh Pora? What about the Muslims? who died here, my MLAs, my um, small workers, my ministers, who were blown up. We had to pick their meat from the uh, treetops. Such was the situation. You know, when I uh, first uh, saw this thing happening, Rajiv Gandhi was prime minister. And we caught these people, these, um, uh, all these weapons and things. At the old airport, I still remember, which is under the... Um, um, uh, Indian Air Force. All those things were laid down to show the Prime Minister that look what we have caught is this. Hmm. And we caught a, a Pakistani who had come from there. And I saw him in uh, in guest house or dark bungalow in uh, what is that, Sopur. Police showed me. And I asked him, why did you come? What made you to come? He said, I was told to kill you. I was ready to kill you, but then I saw that the things I was told about, that Muslims are not praying in the mosque, there is so much this thing and that thing, this I found was wrong. I made a mistake that I came. Who was this militant that would uh, come in? The, from Pakistan. Oh. Somebody had come, hmm. Pakistani fellow. Hmm. And uh, I was shown th this man. Those soldiers, those o officers are still alive who took me to see that, that man, I was chief minister. Now, a lot of people are saying that all the killers, uh, apart from the ones that you had mentioned, whether it was uh, Yasin Malik, who had confessed on television, or Bitta uh, Karate, none of these people have been prosecuted in 32 years. Who's to blame for this? Let me tell you. When they released Bitta Karate, who released him? Did National Conference government release him? Or was it government of India that released him? On what basis did they release him? And when they took those people to uh, Kandahar, hmm? the very first man in that, Latram, he had shot up my first cousin. And I was conversing for Nawab Sahib of Bhopal in the, in the election, parliamentary election at that time. And I heard my first cousin is shot off. My M MLA from that very area, downtown was shot by the same man. The very man blew up a young man on the bridge with all the bombs on him and pressed a button to frighten people. Who took him? That was the Who took Maulana Azhar? Right. Who took him? Who took these people? When I objected to it, I said, don't do it. Hmm. They, are, they have connections here. They have contacts here. This will be the greatest threat to our security. Hmm. They didn't listen. Mm. They didn't listen. So who? That's why I want them to investigate. I want them to investigate honestly. All these killings, rape of those our Kashmiri women in Kupwara. I want all this to be investigated so that the nation knows the truth. Time has come when nation must hear the truth and must live with the truth. And when we're talking of closure of this, after all, there's been great tragedy in the valley. What do you think would be important for closure of all these things? The pundits coming back, is that possible? Also, all these cases being prosecuted. What is the way forward? The way forward is to win the people's hearts. Whether they're pundits, whether they're Muslims, whether they're Sikhs, whoever is a part of this nation. And to also heal the wounds of the rest of the nation. After this film, the wounds are very heavily uh, in everybody's heart because this film has created that tragedy 
I think the Prime Minister and his government must try and heal those wounds immediately before India goes into a spiral which will be difficult to stop. When you say wounds, this includes hatred. What are you saying? Is All it All hatred. Yeah. Total hatred against the Muslim community. One community. Hmm. Which is tragedy. I don't say what happened was good, that we, we welcome it. No. I think it was the greatest tragedy that even in 47, when invaders were on our border, National Conference stood up to see that not a single Hindu is affected in any way. We paid the price of five Tongawalas who took some of these uh, Hindus to Jammu and they were killed in Nagrota. We still accepted that and did not allow the atmosphere to go bad. National Conference history is that. Now the government has you know, made this uh, film tax-free and has advocated, the Prime Minister himself has talked about this film. What is your sense of, uh, of that particular move? I think they want to further penetrate into people's hearts of hatred. That is a tragedy. They're seeing that every policeman, every soldier, everybody sees this movie so that the hate is so extreme, as was in Germany, that Hitler and Goebbels created. And the Jews, six million Jews had to pay the price. How many million will pay the price in India? I do not know. Now, you had met the Prime Minister during that whole process a couple of years ago. What was the thing that you had advocated to him? And do you see that in some ways? Has he been able to do what, uh, you know, he said we'd start a dialogue? I asked the Prime Minister straight away. I had just recovered from COVID. But still I got there because I thought the Prime Minister has called us. We should go and talk to him. He is Prime Minister of the whole nation, not of one community. He represents every Indian. So we went. And when I spoke to him, I told him very frankly, we don't trust you and you don't trust us. Let us try and create the trust which will build future of our nation. He promised us in his speech that Dil Ki Duri or Dehli Se Duri he will try to eliminate. Nothing has happened in that direction. It is not development. It is not whether you send us gold or you send us silver. Or it is how you heal the hearts. Hearts cannot be healed by making roads and bridges and waterways. There is something more than that. It's a trust. We have to create that trust in each other that we can survive together, live together, progress together, and be happy together, rather than creating animosities within people. Now, it's been almost two and a half years since the government has abrogated Article 370. What is the progress you've seen, and what is your view on that? Well, they told the nation, very frankly, when they did this, they locked us up. And even then, the Home Minister lied in the House that Farooq Abdullah is free and that he can go anywhere. I can't bring him here. Luckily, I was able to get out of this door and meet the media. That clip is still there with you people. And I said, I'm, a, I'm arrested and spent eight months in my house. My son spent alone in that other place. So they said that this article, 370, is the one that is creating all the tragedies and that this militancy that is here will be wiped out when this article is gone. I want to ask the government of India today, the Home Minister who made this announcement, has militancy gone? Are people not still dying? Are bombs not going on everywhere? Even yesterday, in Tral and other places, these things are happening. Today they're not coming from Pakistan. They are here, our people. What is making them to do this? There must be something. Investigate this. Why are they feeling alienated that they are ready to give their life when they know that death is on the corner? 
I think time has come when we must try to find the cause and treat it rather than allowing it to drift till it becomes so dangerous. No, we do not know what will be the end. You don't see development happened as a result of it. They say the security situation has improved. There's development going on. Tell me, do you see security people in every corner? If you see soldier in every corner, then is it really peaceful? Do you see security people like this in any other state? In every corner? In every, in every how outside every house? Do you see a security person with laced with all the weapons that he has got? Do you see those trucks that are standing everywhere with soldiers? Do you see them anywhere? So is the situation normal? If the situation was normal, would they be there? And imagine the budget that they presented. Out of our budget of the state, 80% is spent on security, 20% on development. So how, what development do you expect in 20%? And those people who stand with the nation, their security is removed. Why should they stand with the nation tomorrow? When you cannot defend them, who are you fighting? You're fighting your own people. The very people who stood, where were they? In 96, when we took out a, when we stood up for election, when nobody was ready to stand for election. They also say that subsequent governments after 1990 and the pundits fled, didn't make enough efforts to bring the pundits back when your party was in power. What was the kind of Let thing? Let me tell you, I made an effort. Gujral was the prime minister. First move we made. Kept fifth buses ready, 50 buses. I, I, will, I hope those people will remember in Jammu to bring them back. And they, we had one Dhamma incident where innocent Hindus were killed. We had Badgam where in, innocent Hindus were killed. We stopped. Hmm. We said we don't want blood on our hands. Till the situation improves, we cannot bring them back. Because such was the move of our neighbor. And subsequently, your government was in power, your party's government was in power between 2008... They tried. They have hmm. tried all the time. Hmm. Look at the amount of... Tell me, in these eight years, what have they done? Our governments from that time, thanks to Manmohan Singh Ji, we were able to give uh, three, over 4,000 jobs that were created here for Kashmiri Pandits. So we thought by bringing them, their families will come in and they will be here settling down slowly and slowly. Second thing we did was their stipends was given. They were far increased. Their rations were increased. In every way we tried to make them comfortable wherever they were. Have these people done that? Even today some people haven't got stipend for some, so many months. They should answer that. They would say that we've uh, abolished, uh, abrogated Article 370 and therefore we're making this a more secure thing and this would enable the pundits to come back. I'm just putting it up. If they do that, tell me, recently, when the, some of the, when this uh, chemist was killed, Bindru, every single Hindu employee that had come overnight ran away back to Jammu. Tell me. Is this what 370 has abrogation did? Why were they not able to stop them? With all the force that they have here, why were they not able to stop those 3,000 or 4,000 employees, Hindu employees, from running away to Jammu? They should answer that. And what is your assessment of before the article 370 is abrogated? They've been now seven and a half years in power. What do you think they have, what is your assessment of their uh, uh, you know, work that they've done for the Kashmiri Pandits? I think you should ask the Kashmiri Pandits. And you should see the statement of Changu, Dr. Changu, who is one of their leaders. I wish I could show you that statement that he made. Try to trace that, and that will show you. He openly says it, that you have done nothing for us. He says it to Home Minister, speaking 
frankly to Home Minister, I said, what have you done? Nothing. What we got is from Manmohan Singh. And you say we have created accommodations for you? We don't want accommodations. We want to go home. We want to live in our home, there. He says it to him. Just taking you a little bit back, sir. You, you are somehow blamed as though you, start, you started the fire. You would come into power. You would, uh, you know, let the situation deteriorate the way it was during the 80s. That allowed the kind of, uh, you know, militancy to gain strength. What is your point on that? Well, in 83, I won the election. Then also that they said I rigged the election. And they bought my people and were able to dismiss me in 84. This is the Congress you were yes. saying that. I mean, I, that's what happened. Right. Because I didn't share seats. Hmm. So, if they say that we rigged the election in 87, right? Tell me. I ask this nation. When you go for election, you have your party symbol. Either a hand or the lotus or whatever cycle or whatever symbol the election commission gives you. What was the symbol in 87 used by MUF? Uh, this is the Muslim... Muslim United Front. Front yes. What did they use? Mm -hmm. Their symbol was ink pot and the pen. They used the symbol of Allah on the flag and symbol of Prophet Muhammad on the flag. Is that permissible by the election commission? Did the election commission react to that? Did the people of India react to that? How many of them were there? Four of them? And if we rigged the election, or anywhere in India rigging is done, is it not reported to the election commission? Is it not, then the candidate cannot go to the court? He could have gone to the Supreme Court, High Court. Are you talking of the 1987 election? Yes, I'm telling you. Okay. Should I not have gone? Hmm. My ministers lost election. If they say that we have rigged it to such an extent, then why should my minister lose? Deva Saab lost, one of the senior ministers in Anantanag. If I had to rig the election, then I should have seen that he wins. They were saying that Saad Salahuddin would also stood now, of course, this you thing, see, and therefore he lost. Saad Salahuddin, we say we rigged his election. All right. I say, suppose we did rig, rig his election. Why did he not use the methods that government of India had put, election commission had put? He should have gone to the election commission. He should have gone to the court and made a man who had stood against him to, to, to be thrown out. When they could throw Indira Gandhi out, did they not throw in the election? They also say that this Rajiv Gandhi Farooq uh, Abdullah agreement that happened in 87, why was this there? I mean, there's a bit of history that, and this was what led to the rigging, and therefore you know, they wanted a government that they could control. No, no, no. Not at all. Hmm. Please, four people's seats, if they say we have rigged, would they make a government? Why doesn't government of India and people of India understand? What is, what is the tragedy with them? Why don't they understand the truth? I, Rajiv Gandhi and I, why did we meet? Yeah. What was the reason? We had quite a majority, hmm. but I thought we have to work with Delhi. We have to develop the place. Delhi has all the funds. And they will be the ones who will help us. But it didn't happen. Finally, sir, I know we've gone back to history. In terms of closure, in terms of what needs to be done ahead, what would be the two or three things you would recommend that need to be done? They have to win the confidence of the people. Without this agenda of Hindu, 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 Hindu. Without that. India is a secular nation. It belongs to everyone, every single Indian, whether he's Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Christian, Buddhist, whoever he is, or he has no religion. He's part of this nation. That is what we need. We need to build that fabric back again, that this nation belongs to every one of us. And every one of us is responsible for its future, for its progress, for its prosperity. And in particular, Jammu and Kashmir, you're saying? Yes, in Jammu and Kashmir also. Would you we add? have to do it. And I tell them, frankly, it is not by force. You may bring the entire Indian army. You will never be able to win the hearts of the people. You have to work in a different manner. You have to understand what pains them. 
and try to remove that pain. And does this pain include having an elections, uh, bringing people's representation back, making it into a state? Everything. Stop these propagandas that you're doing against one particular community. Secondly, try and have these poor brothers and sisters who are still living in miserable conditions in the rest of the state or the country back home with honor and dignity. Thirdly, not only them, but every other Muslim who has also run away or the Sikh who has run away, bring them with honor back to home. Third, when you hold elections, hold them honestly. Don't have your force to rig them. Don't have your machines which will rig them. You will never build people by doing that. And you think resto st statehood uh, or yes. what would you say? State is important. Hmm. Division of the state. I'm surprised. I mean, union territories become state. This is the first example in the country. I think in the world it must be. Where state, which is supposed to be the crown of India, to be cut into two. Strange. Well, Dr. Farkas Abdullah. Not only this. Yes. And then the delimitation commission. Look at the way they have divided hmm. the seats. I mean, can you beat this? That a parliamentary seat of one particular uh, Anantang district, I'll tell you. He has to, the member of parliament has to be part of the other side of the mountain, Rajori and Punch. How is he going to be able to? cater to those people's problems and cater to the problems from this side of the mountain? How many things they've done like this? Hmm. So that they will be able to win a majority and make a government. Will that government be able to heal the people's wounds or will it increase the wounds of people? They should think about it. You think and seriously think about it. You think the delimitation commission is trying to be weighted towards yes, uh, the yes, Jammu absolutely. region? You ask, you ask anybody. Hmm. Go and ask anybody in the state. Ask their people who are supportive of the BJP. Ask them too. Is that, you think that the government wants to, I mean, the party wants to bring in a, a Hindu chief minister? Would a Hindu chief they, minister... No, be, it's not a question of Hindu chief minister. They want BJP rule. Would without a, people being part of them. Would a Hindu chief minister be acceptable in Jammu and Kashmir? They can do anything they want to do. Let them try. They have tried many experiments. Let them try this experiment also. They are pushing this state into such hands that God help you. You are not averse to, if in a proper elections, some of the party wins. If there is an honest election and there is honest delimitation, I wouldn't mind whoever becomes chief minister because people want him. Not big on trust. Don't trust people. Can you beat this? The minister of government of India comes into Kutua, inaugurates a statue of Maharaja Gulab Singh, creator of this state, Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh. I want to ask that minister, where is that state of Maharaja Gulab Singh? Does it exist? Mm. If it doesn't exist, then what is the re re reason of your putting up that statue on the entry of this state? Explain this to the people of this state and to the rest of the nation. Dr. Abdullah, we have spoken right across on all the issues, both past and present. And I thank you for taking the time out to speaking to India Today magazine. That was Dr. Farooq Abdullah at his residence in Srinagar speaking about his views on the current situation. Thank you very much.